Here's what Dr. Mercola says. Military personnel are being given shots that are not identified, nor are they recorded. Are these injections leaving some of our soldiers deathly ill? The story of Marine David Fry, David Fay, reads like a crime novel, says Dr. Mercola. Secret shots, secret vaccinations, incomplete and fake medical records, deadly illness. But while it's shocking and sad to think that soldiers pledging their lives to defend the United States are being used as guinea pigs for unknown vaccinations is really nothing new. This information is not easy to come by, but the following table was derived from Air Force Joint Instructions such and such a number, Army Regulations such and such a number, and dated uh, May 12, 2004. And here's a list of the different inoculations that all soldiers get. Um, there's one, two, three, turn the page, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 standard operating procedure inoculations that soldiers get. Keeping in mind, folks, again, what holistic physicians have been saying for years, that all inoculations compromise your immune system and make you weaker. The rallying body, after some time, can, uh, can get some benefit from the inoculations, they say, but oftentimes they have to be renewed. Here's what happened. The, um, I'm losing my place. This is the, I just read you an extensive list of vaccines by any account, and this table lists only those vaccines that are likely to be listed on the medical records. In the case of Mr. David Fay, no one knows what vaccine he was given. Perhaps most incriminating was the lack of any vaccine noted on his medical records, which was then later filled in by hand in handwritten. The rest of, the, of these medical records were all typed. Handwritten uh, in ink, it says that uh, he received a flu vaccine. Yet when F uh, Mr. Fay's mother called a military hospital looking for answers, the hospital claimed the shot was, quote, confidential. We can't tell you that information. The military health officer who spoke on the subject was not surprised by the apparent cover-up. Now, this is a military officer. He's a member of the armed forces. His quote is exactly, I'm going to read it to you. We have a lovely term for that kind of cover-up, he said. We call it CYA, the acronym CYA. It stands for cover your ass. That's unfortunately uh, SOP, he says, which is standard operating procedure in the military. You always want a CYA. That's standard operating procedure. Perhaps most concerning is the fact that men and women entering the military are powerless to reject vaccinations. They're expected to do as they are told, no questions asked, and this makes them prime candidates for having their rights violated. In the military, vaccinations are not considered optional. Even if they may harm your health, they're not optional. Case in point, U.S. soldier in Iraq, Private First Class Leif Hammer, was concerned about the questionable safety of anthrax vaccine. When he refused to take it, he was given an Article 15, which is a non-judicial military punishment, including being taken off of missions assigned 18-hour workdays and in reduction of his pay scale, in addition to being subjected to threats and intimidations. In some cases, soldiers can even be court-martialed and dismissed from the armed services. In an open letter, Hammer said, the tactics they have used to coerce me into taking the shots are unregulated, unscrupulous, and downright un-American. And for soldiers who claim they have been harmed by a vaccine, the story is no different. According to the military health officer we mentioned before, soldiers are treated as though vaccine reactions are all in their heads. There's no truth to them. It's all a fantasy. I see the way the propaganda and information war is waged against America's sons and daughters, said the officer, and how patients are treated who claim to be injured from a vaccine. That's troubling, and that should trouble America. The issue of mandatory vaccinations of any kind is truly fraught with all kinds of danger as well as basic ethical questions. Should anyone living in a supposedly free country be forced to be injected with questionable substances against their own will for any reason? 
The doctor goes on to say, the truth is that all vaccines are immune suppressing, meaning they depress your natural immune functions and leave you more open to infection, which leaves you vulnerable to any number of diseases. Individual vaccines also carry their own risks of side effects. The anthrax vaccine, for instance, has been linked to multiple sclerosis, to diabetes, lesions in your brain, autoimmune diseases, paralysis, seizures, and that's only the partial list, says the doctor. Keep in mind that members of the military are not the only ones who are forced into taking vaccines. Civilians, too, must cross many hurdles to opt out of the aggressive vaccine schedule recommended for U.S. children. But it's still your right to do so. You should avoid unwanted vaccinations of all kinds, says the doctor, and I encourage you to do your own research before letting anyone immunize you or your children. That is a, I, I'm, I'm so proud of this physician for bringing this forth. He's right on the ball, this he, guy. It, he really is, and this is horrendous, what we're hearing about what's going on in the mm-hmm. military. But again, as I'm hearing this too, and it, of course the military, where they're in here, the the ridicule, the forcing to do all the extra work, the, the to- talking, well, commanding. That's standard, that's okay, SOP, that's sta- baby. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's standard procedure, operating procedure, SOP. But... I'm reminded, too, of the recent thing and the concern that I have, which my own daughter faced with uh, my granddaughter, Miranda, Mm -hmm. in a a, a preschool that she'd been in and had, you know, with all of her friends. It's there in New York City. And one of uh, my daughter's closest friends was the main teacher there. And the grief that my daughter went through, because since our daughter Rachel, uh, that we're speaking about, uh, was a baby, she had had a a life-threatening reaction to the DPT vaccine, the first and only vaccine I ever gave either one of my kids. The doctor insisted on the DPT. She took it and got this violent rash all over her body, raging fevers. She was very ill for months. It was terrible, and it was terrifying. We tried everything. At the time, we didn't have a whole lot of things available. Uh, this is near, this is uh, almost uh, 39 years 38, ago. Yeah, right. And so uh, it was just horrendous. Now, after that, I refused all vaccines for my daughter and my son. And I had, there was a pediatrician who agreed with us, with us. He was a big time guy in Hollywood. And he said, Mona, they'll take your kids away. That was at that time. Mm-hmm. And he said, so he said, I'll write down that they've had their vaccines. He says, I'm, I'm with you on this. I totally agree with you how dangerous they are. He says, but I get my, he would be liable too if he did it so he cooperated that way right and now with our my daughter because she knows what knows what she what was happened to her she wouldn't let her daughter be uh inoculated at, and the school insisted the school pressured the school had her before a board rachel they had her before a board they accused her of every kind of thing and they forced they couldn't i guess maybe they could they they couldn't say that that was the reason that they kicked the miranda out of preschool <laughs> Yeah, and so they said, "Well, we're kicking her out anyway. She doesn't have a good attendance." What? Attendance. That wasn't even true because she'd been there. And so Rachel says, "This is unbelievable. They've kicked her out of this right after this meeting, trying to force me mm-hmm. to to inoculate and my own, child." And her and own, and her own very good friend. Yes. Would not back her no, up. No, she stood no. against her. Mm-hmm. And th- she says the humiliation, the accusations, the implication of what a bad mother, th- and when Rachel was total dedication, personified. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was horrendous, I remember. And so I, th- th- you're fighting a- an enormous war here, but uh, we didn't. It's good that this kind of knowledge is being brought out. And the fact that now, in addition to this, we brought some of these facts out to you that. Um, the drug companies who do these vaccines are not liable for these horrendous side effects. That's right. They are not liable. You can't sue them. You, they, people sign a waiver, uh, uh, a non-blame kind of waiver. And that, w- that was the case when the, uh, the lady that came to me, who's beautiful, child, bright, intelligent, vocal, beautiful, two-year-old, in every way perfect, uh, <laughs> she was, had to give her a vaccine, and she was forced to sign a waiver on that. And.